How's it going everybody? Jason here. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever it is you are in the world. Today I'm taking a look at Soundshed and Soundshed is developed by Chris Cook and uh, probably four or five months ago, maybe even longer, he started working on this. I remember he left a comment on one of my videos uh, a while back, but can't exactly remember when. So Soundshed now has the ability to control your Spark through the web, through a limited number of browsers, and there is a Windows, Mac, and Linux version of desktop apps. So I haven't had that many videos about that being a deal breaker for some. I could really only talk to my own use case. So uh, I do obviously use it to practice a lot, but most of the time I'm using my stuff down here for recording. And I mostly use the Yamaha THR because the tones uh, suits the style of music that I play probably more so than the Spark does, but I still love this little beast. And I do love the fact that the Yamaha does have a desktop app because I spend most of the time DAW down here, Yamaha app down here in my other screen, and it's just a lot easier than having to mess around with an app. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm just gonna do a live review. So I'm gonna try the web app just live in real time and see how it goes, and I'm gonna download the Mac OS version and uh, try it out just in real time so you can see kind of how user-friendly it is. So first, uh, when you go to soundshed.com, You've got the web version here, gives you a little notification that it will work in Chrome and Microsoft Edge, but any browsers that don't support web Bluetooth are not going to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure Bluetooth is turned on for my Mac here, and let's open the web app and see what happens. So the Spark is on right now. Um, it's not connected through Bluetooth right now. So I'm gonna open the web app. So a quick little tour. Okay, so tones. Uh, favorites, so I'm guessing this is anything you mess around with in the UI you can save as a favorite and probably save as a preset as well. Um, I'm not signed in, so that's probably why I'm not going to see any community tones or tone cloud. So go into the amp. So to get started, turn your amp on and select scan. So let's hit scan. Do, do, do. So there's the Spark 40 audio. And there's, so the Spark 40 BLE is the connection that the app uses to control the Spark. And the Spark 40 audio is the one that allows you to use the Spark as a Bluetooth speaker. So let's try them both and see if there's a difference. So I'm gonna to connect to the Spark 40 BLE and pair this. So that's probably my device ID. Let's connect it. Uh, let's hit channel two and channel two. Yes, channel two is selected on the amp. And there it is. So that's my... Uh, okay, so I wonder if this is the, the actual dial here, not your presets. So it could be, let's switch these. So that did switch. Uh, my preset number four is my direct signal. So everything should be turned off when I switch to number four. So it switched it on the hardware here, but it didn't switch it in the UI. Okay. So it is switching these. No, okay, let's go back to 40 BLE. Refresh. You. All right. So I can switch back and forth. Let's see if it's actually, if I switch the presets on the web, if it's actually changing them. So preset two is selected. This is my... Uh Sounds like the right one. If I switch to four, that's my direct input. So at all the effects should be turned off. Yep. Three, I think I have a rock plexi. All right, so the presets do switch, but nothing's getting loaded into the, into the UI. So let me refresh the whole browser, see if that makes a difference.
Well, it... Yeah, so it is. So it does switch. That's the pure acoustic. The parameter names aren't loading, but I'm sure that's just it hasn't been developed yet. Uh, it's at least loading the delay and the reverb. These are probably levels delay time. Yeah. Okay, so you can toggle those things on and off. You can switch. It doesn't uh, doesn't seem to always reset the uh, the name uh, for some reason, but it does change the preset tones in here, which is neat. So. Yeah, all right. Next, uh, jam. So these are boo, 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 probably just going to open up yeah, YouTube links, which is cool. And so now I've got these ones favorited, and they're probably going to show up under my favorites list. All right, so that's cool. You can have the backing tracks, and they will play. Let's see where they play through. I'm going to guess they just play through your computer. Yeah. So then you can... Uh, that's handy. So they stay on top as well. So you can go back and mess around with your tones. All right, that's pretty handy. All right, so anything else in Jam? Nope, just a list of backing tracks and things that you can favorite, which is pretty cool. And what else? So just some credits. Again, yeah, developed by, by Chris Cook. There is links to his GitHub account as well. So if you are a developer, you can go and grab a version of it and fork it and make some updates to it. <clears throat> and there's a bunch of other people in the community that are providing graphics and doing some testing and all that stuff as well, uh, which I think is awesome. So let's get into... Um, uh, I'm going to go back to the main site and I've already downloaded the Mac version of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Chrome just so it disconnects the Bluetooth from it. Uh, it's three, it's 300 meg. It's just a, it's just a zip file and it's a self-contained application. So there's nothing else that you have to do, at least with Mac OS. All right, so it looks exactly like the web version. Tones, amp. All right, so that loads right away. Jam tracks is the same. About is the same. And uh, I am logged into my profile that I created. So I downloaded it and opened it and just added my account in here so I could just try some of the, the saving features and, and community features. So tones. Let's see if this... So I have preset number three. And yep, yeah, it's switching the hardware. Four is my direct. Yep, yeah, so I do have that labeled as audio interface. So if I'm just using this and I want to record a clean signal, so that's good. So it is grabbing the name uh, that I have set for these presets which is cool, and it looks like everything is switching in there properly, and all the parameter names are showing up uh, with no problem at all. So, if I want to switch. Cool, so that switch is pretty quick. Turning it off. Yep. Awesome. It's great. Gain. Now let's see if it will switch when you're. Yep. So I'm adjusting the treble here. You can see it's adjusting in the UI. Mid, bass, everything. Cool. That's awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. Now this is the neat thing about this. There are some experimental effects. So these don't exist in the Positive Grid Spark uh, mobile apps right now. And there's no real notification here. Other, you just have to know which ones are in there. So I'm pretty sure this GK700 is not 
in the spark. Let's get rid of that. So this is neat. So being able to load different amps and mods and delays and things. Uh, I think these are all the regular delays that come with the spark, but there are some experimental presets, which is very cool. Uh, treble booster, there is no treble booster in the Spark app, so that's probably yeah, it's an experimental one too. Very cool. Gate, still one noise gate, still the same compressors that are in the regular app. Um, but that is awesome, having the, the experimental effects there, and it's fast and it switches. It synchronizes, no problem at all. So if I turn any of these on. So it's fast, it works, it gets all the proper sounds. Has some experimental effects, that's really cool. Uh, jam tracks, like I said, just linked, links to YouTube videos. So if I wanted to go here, this is a tone that I favorited. Okay, so I can't load it from here, but I can add some notes and I can save it and upload it, I think, to the Tone Cloud. So that probably... So I don't know what that play button does. Maybe that's supposed to load it. Open. Tones. So let's try this again. Hit play. Fender Clean 2, there we go. So yes, so that play button, yes, it is supposed to load those tones. Cool, so if I go back to tones and I load my other preset in here, that should switch back. Okay, so one little weird thing. It doesn't always seem to switch the presets here, um, which, oh. I don't even know where that preset came from, but that's definitely not the one that I loaded. So one little problem there with loading tones that you download and that you save, etc. but as far as the actual amp control, it works awesome. So that switched back to everything that I had here. All right, so final thoughts. The web app was a little bit flaky, which I think is to be expected. I just got it labeled as a beta, and uh, I would probably never use a web app to control it anyway. The Mac version, uh, the desktop version for the Mac, worked flawlessly. So after I did the little live test, I played around with it with the camera off for a bit. It always synchronized, and it always worked flawlessly. So it never crashed. It never crashed my Spark amp. And uh, it was great. So I think for my purposes, because I am always in front of my computer, not having to use the Positive Grid app is a huge plus for me because I don't use any of the other features that um, they have, like the Smart Jam and uh, the, uh, the Auto Chords and all those types of things. I never use any of those features. I always just use the Spark app to tinker around with sounds. So I will probably be using this forever. I don't think I'll ever use the app again unless they come out with a cool feature that that I would like to use. So um, the last thing is with these experimental effects, I don't know how those are being loaded in. If you're a developer, you can probably pull the code down and see how that is done. But I think that leaves it wide open for the community to add some awesome uh, new amp models and new effects and stuff like that. So I don't think Positive Grid have really added any uh, amps or effects in the year and a bit that this thing has been out. So it's cool that Chris has built that ability for it. So uh, I would say, yeah, this thing is awesome. Um, I haven't been able to test it on a PC or Linux, so your mileage may vary on those. But for me, download it, open it, connect it, boom, it just works. It's actually been a lot more stable than what I can say for the, the, uh, the actual Spark app itself. So hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe. I've had this Spark for just over a year and I'm gonna do a year long update. Uh, would I buy it again? And uh, some commercial songs that I've used it. So remember to like and subscribe. You'll get notified when that video comes out. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.